Ladies and gentlemen, apologies for the late upload yesterday. It was actually my 24th birthday. So after we ended up checking out the new dungeon over on stream, which by the way, Twitch is in the description. Um, I just kind of went off and hung out with family and stuff. So yesterday's video is now today's video. And today's video is us checking out the weapon god rules for the Warlord's Ruins weapons. Uh, there's only four of these, so today's video wouldn't be very long if I only talked about those weapons. So we're going to talk about all those weapons, all the good stuff about them, all the bad stuff about them. And then after that, I'm going to give you guys my opinions on the dungeon as a whole, because honestly, I have a lot of really positive things to say about it if you guys do care. But as always, timestamps below if you don't. So make sure to subscribe if you enjoy the content and want to see more videos from me. Also, a shout out to the Patreon and Tier 2 YouTube supporters. I appreciate you guys more than than you could know and without further ado let's jump into it all right so starting things off i of course want to talk about the origin trait coming with all four weapons which is called sundering this trait states that destroying weapons and constructs grants this weapon bonus reload speed and charge rate constructs include barricades turrets stasis crystals and other objects created in the field now honestly, I feel like most of the time this origin trait is going to be completely worthless. However, if you do ever get it to proc, the booster reload that it grants you is actually really nice. I tried testing this with some strand tangles, thinking that we might be able to get some consistent use out of this trait, you know, alongside these stasis crystals, but no, unfortunately it doesn't work and you're probably not going to see the benefits of this trait very often in day to day combat. With that said, let's now move on to the actual weapons. Vengeful Whisper. Up first in today's video is the first ever strand bow to make its way into Destiny 2. Vengeful Whisper is a precision frame with the very unique attribute of rolling with double damage perks, making it a very nice option for those going the legendary bow route. Taking a look at the perks, and by the way, shout out to Snake from the D2 Leaks Discord for this information, we can see that Vengeful Whisper is able to get some very unique rolls. There are many different avenues that you can take this bow down, which leaves a little bit of something for everybody. The roll I'm personally going to grind out is the double damage perk roll that I spoke about earlier in the form of Explosive Head and Precision Instrument. But you can also trade out Precision Instrument for Hatchling if you'd like some strand synergy instead of just raw damage. We also have the combination of Archer's Tempo and Successful Warm-Up for really fast draw times, and we can also go with Archer's Tempo and Precision Instrument for a more traditional roll that's going to prioritize draw time and damage. Overall, I think Legendary Bows tend to not be worth it unless it's Tyranny of Heaven. Shout out to my viewer Ben McClellan, by the way. So I'm not too excited for this pick. It does, however, offer many things that other Legendary Bows do not, and for that, I'm leaning more towards it being worth your time to actually farm out in this dungeon. Naeem's Lance, I probably butchered that, but that's what I'm going to call it. Speaking of weapons worth your time to farm, let's talk about one that isn't really worth your time, and that's the new strand rapid fire sniper rifle. Now, don't get me wrong, this weapon isn't downright terrible, but when I look at it, all I can think about is how the supremacy from Last Wish is simply better. Granted, Naeem's Lance will grant you synergy in DPS phases as long as you're using a strand heavy weapon like the new Trials Cataphract GL, but aside from that, this weapon isn't one that I would go after. It rolls with Reconstruction in the first column, with Precision Instrument, or in very niche cases, High Ground in the second. It's just so hard for me to properly recommend this to people when the only thing it has going for it is being able to match surge buffs with your heavy weapon when the perks just don't really compare to other rapid fire snipers in the same slot that are craftable no less. Indebted Kindness. This weapon right here is the shining crown jewel of the entire dungeon when it comes to loot because it comes to the table as a completely new archetype of weapon, the rocket assisted sidearm frame. This is the first special ammo legendary sidearm in the game and as you'd imagine, it shoots rockets instead of bullets. These rockets deal splash damage like normal rockets do, with the weapon even coming with rocket launcher barrels and magazines. It is also capable of hitting a precision shot with the impact of the rocket, followed by bonus damage provided by the explosion. I haven't fully decided on how I feel about this weapon type just yet, but I do feel that it's pretty decent if you're running double special, but I wouldn't have this weapon take up my sole special weapon slot, personally. Regardless of how good it is from a complete meta point of view, who gives a shit because the weapon is simply really fun to use. It comes with actual good perks as well, which is just a massive bonus. The first column offering lead from gold for ammo economy, impulse amplifier for rocket velocity and reload speed, and a new perk called beacon rounds, which allows your weapon's rockets to track enemies, which is pretty good for long range 
uses. The final column perks include Surrounded and Volt Shot, making this weapon not only a really cool novelty, but a pretty solid pick from the perk department as well. Dragon Cult Sickle Our final weapon, and potentially most useless weapon here today, is for some reason a Caster Frame Sword. Now, I'm not entirely sure why Bungie decided to throw this weapon into the mix, especially considering we just got one as a ritual weapon, but maybe there is a buff on the way, and honestly, I would love that. Hopefully, this is not copium. As it currently stands, though, caster frames suck dookie ass, and Dragon Cult is no different, although it does have potential, like I said, if a buff is on the horizon. In the perk department, I believe Dragon Cult may be the first sword I've seen roll with the Slice perk, which is pretty solid considering it reduces the damage of any enemies you hit after popping your class ability and then smacking them, and it should be pretty good for survivability. Uh, you also have Unrelenting there for another survivability option, with Demolitionist for grenade energy on kills, and Tireless Blade if you're trying to aid your sword's energy economy. Now, for the second column, we have classics such as Whirlwind Blade and Surrounded, with Chain Reaction being featured as a perk we haven't seen on Caster Frame since Sola Scar, and I'm pretty sure Sola Scar is the last Caster Frame we got. Um, and we also have Golden Tricorn for the highest possible damage buff at 50%, which honestly could be pretty nasty with Strand Titan, considering how many ability kills you get. You get a kill with the sword, you get an ability kill with the Strand Titan abilities, which are just constantly up, and then you're slinging 50% extra damage with the sword. Sounds pretty solid. Um, and we also have Hatchling, which is just kind of a meme roll. Honestly, like I said, I could see Golden Tricorn being absolutely nasty on Strand Titan. Uh, we could also have Demo and Chain Reaction being kind of a fun meme roll, and Tireless Blade and Surrounded being something a bit more traditional. It's honestly kind of hard to tell which is the definitive roll to go with here because caster frames aren't really all that useful. There's never really a situation where you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to need a caster frame. It, it just doesn't happen, so just go with what your heart tells you to go with on the sword, and I think you'll be fine. Moving on over to my opinions on everything, all in all, this has to be one of the weakest lineups of weapons I think I've ever seen from a dungeon, obviously not counting the really old ones such as Pit and Throne. Um, it makes me really sad too, because I truly do enjoy the Warlord's Ruined Dungeon for what it's worth, but between the weapons being as underwhelming as they are, and the armor just not being what I was expecting coming off of Ghost of the Deep. I don't really have much of a reason to play this dungeon, at least when it comes to personal reasons. There isn't really anything here for me to be excited to grind for, so I don't see myself running this activity pretty much ever once I get the sidearm roll that I want. With all that said though, I do think that Warlord's Ruin is one of, if not the best dungeon that Bungie has ever added into the game from a pure gameplay perspective. This dungeon offered absolutely beautiful sight lines, really fun and interesting transitionary moments with traps and mimic chests, and even featured three different bosses for us to fight, leaving not one single encounter in the dungeon without one. I thought that decision was absolutely fantastic because with the way these bosses were positioned, each one got progressively grander and harder from a mechanical scale as you went. The first boss involved shooting Taken Blight Eyes to get out of the cage, and then activating a Scorn Totem for damage. The second boss had this whole freeze and fire mechanic alongside lighting four different fires and damaging between them like Callus from Leviathan. And the final boss truly felt like something that could have been featured in a raid as a mini boss. Hopping island island as you kill big yellow bar scorn, getting corrupted, transferring the corruption to other scorn, activating totems, and then dealing damage was really cool. And then engaging in a final stand on top of the castle watchtower was just an insane moment that I won't forget anytime soon. The pacing of the dungeon was great, the visuals were great, the mechanics were unique, and the bosses didn't have insane amounts of health, so each encounter didn't feel as sluggish like Ghost of the Deep did. So hats off to Bungie, outside of a loot perspective, you guys knocked this one out of the park. And with that said, that's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you all thought down in the comments down below, as I really like seeing discussions around new raid and dungeon content, especially when the majority of it seems to be so positive, which definitely seems like a rarity nowadays. Shout out to all my word of the day enjoyers for my last video. I really appreciate you guys sticking with it towards the end of each video and supporting the content. And today's word of the day is of course going to be meatball in honor of the final boss of Warlord's Ruin. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for the love and support here on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you all next time.